As our last speaker for this part, I would like to ask RJ Banga to come up, CEO of MasterCard. So, uh, thank you all very much. And, uh, you know, I'm convinced that when we first met, this was meant to be a cosmic joke because I still don't know what a lady in a tiara will have in common with a guy in a turban. <laughs> but eventually I found it. And what came out to be common was our interest in trying to do something about this problem that you just spoke so well about, Melinda, and Dan as always, who's, I've heard him talk about this so many times. He talks about it with the passion of a believer. And I think that's what came in common. And now when I look back, this is a few years back, I've also learned the meaning of the word bully pulpit. Because she uses this bully pulpit, and she bullies me a fair amount along the way. And I think that has, so it's lent a new meaning to the logic of bully pulpit. And I'm sure uh, your husband is very aware of that, uh, of the utilization of those two words together. Now, how this... <laughs> Why do I say that? Because, yes, it's a big problem, but if you don't break it down into small, bite-sized chunks, you will get overwhelmed by the nat nature of what we're trying to deal with. And the first thing that I got going with her was she made me commit on a World Bank IMF panel in front of a bunch of people as to what I would put up as a big goal. And I made this commitment of 500 million people that MasterCard would reach by the year 2020. I got off the panel, and this young lady sitting here behind here came up to me and said, which part of your brain were you thinking with when you made that commitment? I said, actually, I was thinking with Queen Maxima's brain because she <laughs> wanted me to make this commitment. Turns out, between then and today, we've reached there. We've actually reached there as a company with our partner. So for once, I have a chance to have the bully pulpit, right? So I'm, I'm using it. So we've reached there. The problem is what we've reached is inclusion. We haven't yet completely got to the stage, even for those 500 billion people, the opportunity for them to understand the meaning of the value of that inclusion in the form of better savings, better credit, better insurance, a better life. That we haven't yet done completely. Because just getting governments to agree to set up the right regulatory framework to deposit benefits into their accounts is not enough. They've got to feel the power of being part of in being included in the financial system of the world because otherwise it will not be sustained. So that to me is our biggest task. And what you have taught us all is that sustainable growth in this space will require the private sector's capital, ingenuity, and technology, in addition to the government setting the right guide rails, rules, and methods, and regulations, as you said, Melinda, very clearly. But also getting the, the NGO community and the private sector to trust each other adequately to make all these troubles look simple to solve. And I think that's where you're taking us, and I think that's a huge new opportunity. I know that over the last few years, she's got me to think about how to get access to small merchants to credit. We don't lend any money. Banks do. But we can help digitize the supply chain and create the transaction record that using AI allows you to allow a bank to make a much better decision on how much money to give the woman with a small shop in front of a house, which she couldn't get earlier. We're doing that now in a number of countries in partnership with originally Unilever, coincidentally a company that also gets influenced by the bully pulpit. <laughs> and, and so that is her doing. I think she brought Paul Polman at that time and me together at, in Davos to actually get that deal going. And now we're expanding that to India with them. And just yesterday with Rabobank, we have announced, thanks to you again, that we will reach a million farmers in Africa and Asia with digital tools on their phone to enable them to access markets for their produce and get access to fertilizer and seeds in a way that they would not otherwise do. And so I think whichever way you look at it, the chance to go from just uh, inclusion to financial security is where you're taking us. So I'd say, yes, it was a strange partnership to start with, but I'm very lucky and I'm blessed, and so are all the people 
who work in our company and have seen you and have had a chance to be there. And all I can say is uh, to you, Your Majesty, thank you for sharing her with us. She is quite a treasure. Thank you very much. Thank you so much again.